Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. Really excited for this video uh, at a nursery that I used to uh, buy some things from uh, years ago who start plants from tissue culture. Uh, we're AgriStarts in, what was this? Apopka. A a Apopka, Florida. Uh, this is a Thai Strode. Uh, what, what, uh, tell us your role here at AgriStarts. So I'm a president of AgriStarts. Okay. Uh, I am, we're a second generation uh, facility. My mm -hmm. dad started the company in 1984. Gotcha. Um, and I came on about 20 years ago uh -huh. and we've, you know, slowly developed uh, and, and grown over the years, getting right. into different um, types of plants. Nice. So uh, tissue culture. Uh -huh. I have not covered tissue culture. Can you give viewers a brief description of, you know, of what, what tissue culture is versus other ways in which you would start plants. Yeah, so tissue culture is asexual propagation. Um, what we do is we take the meristem cells of a plant, disinfect it, put it on a sterile growing media. Uh, if we're successful, that plant acclimates, turns into a plant that we can then replicate and mm -hmm. make true to type plants from that mother plant. Okay. Um, uh, we'll virus index the plant. The plants typically have a very strong growth habit Mm -hmm. uh, nice uniformity, um, and it's it's just a really good tool for a lot of plants. Okay, so I mean we're standing here with jo with jars mm -hmm. uh, behind us, but folks aren't used to necessarily seeing plants grown in uh, in jars. So, so what are some of the reasons that you would attack a plant? You know, uh, you know, propagating a plant this way. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. So one of the biggest reasons is there's no plant avail availability other way ways right, like. Right. Seeds not an option, or difficult to root. Difficult to root. Uh -huh. um, absolutely. Uh -huh. uh, things where something's released and needs to be clonal. Uh -huh. um, gotcha. Gotcha. Where, you know, because gotcha. we can replicate that original mother plant. Right. So what are you saying is, if you have a, if you have a, if you have a named cultivar or something, and you you can get drift in taking cuttings. Right. So you could, if you took cuttings for 20 years of the life of the plant, mm -hmm. you would potentially see some, the, the plant trying to change yep. uh, over time. It's not going to happen. Right. And that same thing can happen here if it's not managed properly. Okay. So we have a mother uh -huh. block system okay. that we uh -huh. carefully manage um, mm -hmm. and it mitigates a lot of that. So you can go problems. back to the original parent plant yes. basically. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. On a regular basis. So you guys have been in business, you said since 1984. Yeah. Was there a lot of demand for this type of tissue culture right out of the, right out of the gate? Or yeah, is this... so my dad had uh, gotten an early start in tissue culture. Uh -huh. He was working in the field for about seven years prior uh -huh. to uh -huh. having the guts to, you know, go right. out on his own. <laughs> right. Uh -huh. And he saw a need for pre-finished indoor foliage liners uh -huh. to gotcha. the Apopka growers. Gotcha. Um, so that's where he started, and uh -huh. then he expanded his business by... Right getting a Chevy Nova hatchback and he figured out he could fit 2,000 plants in that hatchback uh, right. and then he would drive it all the way down to South Florida yeah, yeah. Um, and started cultivating a, a market down there as well. With Homestead. With Homestead yes. growers. Uh -huh. And then each time he was down there, he'd go visit somebody new right. and then he'd have a new customer right. and then we eventually you know, upgraded from the Nova to a truck. Okay. So he initially started mostly foliage Yes, things. it was... Right. Primarily, well, 100% all foliage out okay. of the get-go. Okay, I got you. And then, uh, where's the fruit plant? I mean, what I got from you guys was mostly fruit. Okay. Fr was fruit plants. Gotcha. So yeah. we, probably about 2006, uh -huh. we started getting into fruit crops. Okay. My dad always did specialty bananas uh -huh. and a couple other little individual right. pieces for specific customers. Right. Um, but then in 2006, we started getting involved with the University of Florida's uh, Low Chill Blueberries. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then from there, we kind of cultivated uh, a, a new market mm -hmm. and we wanted to continue to add to that. Right. Yeah, so yeah, then yeah. we went and found the best blackberry breeding program at the University of Arkansas. Yep. And, you know, just started putting all these pieces together. And then at one point we're like, we've got a whole edible program. Let's highlight that on our yeah, catalog right. and like make it something substantial. And then we've filled in some missing pieces with like raspberries and things like that. Right. And yeah, for, yeah. Uh, you know, since 2006, it's that, that market's been really good to us. Yeah, I got a lot of figs from you. Figs uh -huh. are, you know, despite the fact that they're not the hardest thing necessarily to root, you can't necessarily get a lot of material off. Mm -hmm. You can't get consistency. Right. And then I found that I could get these 72 cell trays from you guys and then I could make 
similar pieces in a single season, yeah. you know, as opposed to one to tier and one to tier, right. you know, I could have a crop. And that's, look. that's a huge part about the benefits of tissue culture is uniformity. Right. Uh, yeah. You can take cuttings of some of this stuff, but you get into the challenges right. you just spoke of, um, sure. to where we can, you know, send stuff out and growers be really programmed, scheduled and do bed run, you know, right. type shipping. So, uh, so, Viruses, I would think, was another. We, we, we talked about some of the reasons you would do this. So if you had some sort of virus that had entered a plant through cuttings, this would be a place where yes, they could, yes. So yeah, go ahead. So, so what we do is we try to get as much information up front with that plant. Right. Um, sometimes the customers, uh, or, uh, clients have already done testing yeah. and then could submit that with it. Mm -hmm. uh, or sometimes they just flat know Mm -hmm. These plants got problems. Yeah, Can right, you clean yeah. them up? So we yeah. we do have techniques to mm -hmm. do some cleanup, right. and then we'll send off to a third party to verify, um, you know, that they're clean. Okay, so you can you can basically tell. I mean, some, you know, where we see when we see some sort of disease enter the plants like that. Once you clean them up, then you're sending out. Oh yeah, sending them back virus out into the stuff. world. Virus now, free. when things get out back into the real world, and, and their landscapers could come or right, whatever, right, right, or know, a landscaper so, with the yeah. same head shears at yeah. forty-seven different jobs. Yeah, but what our customers right. can have the confidence of is the material they're receiving as their starter plants. Right. They're starting for clean. Right. Nice. So this is an extremely sterile mm -hmm. environment. They're, I mean, they're cleaning their tools every. You know, they're opening the jar, when they're opening the jars, the tools are being cleaned. Yeah, after every jar. Right, and you've got you've got a how are you how are you sterilizing these um, everything? I mean, so we have large autoclaves, which are okay. essentially big pressure cookers. Okay, so uh, mm -hmm. we sterilize with uh, low pressure and steam uh -huh. um, over a duration of time. They're using the glass bead sterilizers for all their instruments. They're essentially right. surgical instruments, okay. um, and then. Uh, paper towels get bagged in autoclavable yeah. safe okay, bags right, right. and go through that. So even the paper towels are going yep. through a Everything that moves into this lab. Uh -huh. our, our technicians put on lab shoes, mm -hmm. tie back their hair, uh, wash to their uh, forearms. Right. We let them wear street clothes right. uh, to be comfortable. Um, yeah. We've never seen uh, any, any issue with that. Um, other labs you'll go in and they'll be smocked, but we feel we want to keep our people happy um, right, yeah, right, and, yeah, and comfortable, yeah. and that's worked well for us over uh, you know the history of the company. New plants, yeah. So right. that's where I have fun, you okay. know, um, interacting with Kip or uh, right. plant concepts, you gotcha. know, and seeing what they've got. Right. Yeah, decide, yeah, yeah. okay, does that fit what I know my customer base will want? Right. Um, and bring it in that way. Other things are just like kind of throwing darts yeah right you know yeah, yeah. i think it's a cool plant yeah. let me let me see gotcha. then we've got tons of customers saying hey you need to be doing this you need to be doing that right. and so we'll do that a lot of times um and you know if it's something unprotected then right. we do it for them and they just have first right of refusal right yeah, so yeah, each yeah. month i'm like okay i made this many because everybody always thinks they can take and sell as many as we can make, yeah, yeah. but by like month three or four, get 2,000, they're like, whoa, 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 slow down. <laughs> right. And we can't stop. Once we start, right. stopping's hard. I uh, got you, I got you. Yeah, once they're in the gym. Yeah, because we're on a four week schedule. Yeah, you know? I got you. Um, and if we start, you know, at 2,000 a month, we can dial that in and get pretty close, yeah. all bearing some kind of crazy root failure. Yeah. You know, but we can be reliable that way when it's program orders. But the gotcha. challenging things for tissue culture are the seasonal spikes, where it's all or nothing. You got this tight window because right, yeah. we build, 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 build. Well, if we have issue with planting yeah. or rooting, that's when it can be bad. Yeah. This is what we consider our elite mother stock. Okay. We'll have 40 test tubes of isolated plants. Gotcha. And then this is the group of plants that we go to to start the production lines. Okay, gotcha, um, and gotcha. Then we'll, we'll bulk those up and subpropagate for 12 times, and then, you know, every- And you come back to these every time. time. Every four it? weeks, there's a new line coming off the mothers going into the production. Okay, and that's how you prevent that genetic drift. Yes. You're always coming back to that coming original to plant um, over and over. How long can you keep these in here? So if managed properly, this can go on into perpetuity. We have Syngonium white butterfly that uh -huh. my dad ex planted before uh -huh. he even had this property. Right. He did in a, a bedroom uh -huh. and uh, <laughs> wow. it, okay. it, his house. And then from, from there, he uh -huh. built the lab, brought that plant material in. And 38 years later, we are still working the original mother plants. How could this help with um, restoration? 
uh, you know, and, and you know, produce maybe from a ra you know rare plants and yeah. So I mean, things. the same way we do with any regular production item, um, you know, we get uh -huh. a, a selection or variety or cultivar yes. that you mm -hmm. know has merit. Right. We put it in culture, and then we can just keep it going, keep small amounts of right. production going on a monthly basis. Right. Uh, you know, do larger quantities for um, restoration projects. Uh, right. So we, we work with a lot of native plant growers right. gotcha. uh, that are kind of specializing in those types of plant material. Right. Uh, so we have a fair amount of that in culture. Where's the demand on that as time has gone on? So it's that's an interesting market. It uh -huh. always increases every mm -hmm. year. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, never by a, a big amount, uh -huh. but a steady clip. Right. So we like being engaged with it. It's, it, you know, it's all doing things for ecology i mean what right yeah, yeah right that, yeah that's great stuff right it's a win -win. so yeah absolutely uh -huh. a win-win so yeah we like staying engaged with that and we hope to see more and more of those types of opportunities present themselves as right. uh, you know different things change so what is your main um market we haven't talked about this because you're, you're not going to come to agri starts and buy a tray <laughs> we're, that we're about to show you uh in a few minutes so yeah so our main market mm -hmm. is commercial wholesale growers gotcha. uh, and commercial farms. Mm -hmm. um, what right. we're providing is a young rooted starter plant yeah. to be potted up in a four inch pot, a one gallon, a three gallon, right. and then finished by a professional grower gotcha. uh, and then taken you know, to, to a, the retail point or a landscaper. Right. Um, and then we do a lot of business with farms, planting directly into the field yeah, for fruit. to grow those plants to harvest yes. fruit. Okay, for, for, for fruit production. So you got a new building um this year that we were just in yes uh, okay and yeah. then back over this way and stuff will, will pan around how, how much actual greenhouse space so we have two hundred and ten thousand square feet of greenhouse space okay um that we typically do thirty thousand square foot expansions right um okay that's our uh my dad's first large lab expansion uh -huh. kind of catty corner you can't really see it right now was uh -huh. his original trailer lab gotcha um so yeah uh, it's for those who don't know. I mean, there's, there's a lot of nurseries through here. Oh, this is yeah, this is one of those in, places. We're that, in a hot spot hub, uh, right? Popka, Florida. Probably the best growers. Some of the best growers in the country are all in this little okay. town. So it made sense that he would have set up shop doing tissue culture right in the middle of the yes. Yeah, right. that was part of the, right. the strategy, right in the thick of it all. Right, and then expanding down to South Florida. To, yeah, down to Homestead, which is. Even yep, <laughs> there's yep. it's nursery Lots after nursery after nursery, for sure. right? And we, we see those pockets across the country where the nurserymen just tend to congregate together. Mm. A lot of times we go to universities. For us, in NC State University, yep. it's the cheapest land as close as I can be to the college that I went to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's kind, it's kind yeah. of interesting. We got UF Extension right around the corner uh -huh. from us, so yeah, no, we're it's a, it's a good spot and. Um, being in that critical mass is, is huge. I see. All right, so we've got all different types of plant material coming out from the lab. Organization is critical for us. Right. We do not want to mix varieties ever. Yeah. Um, so we have lots of systems in place to prevent that. Uh, we do um, dual tagging. Yes. So gets a, a ID stake tag and right. then a, a barcode for the On actual the tray. tray. Right. Yep. I got you. Um, with, a, with a job number. Um, so all that gets staged and organized before it goes over to the tech. Uh -huh. and, and how yeah. many pieces are in one of these um, little? There's probably 30 plants in this tub here. Okay, and they're just, they're rooted cuttings and then behind stuff. Well, over these here. are this is still in vitro material that okay. uh, we've initiated stage three rooting. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. And so then from there she's. What's she, what's she doing there? So this is stuff stage two that comes out and then they uh -huh. divide them up. Yes. Size them. Uh -huh. and then plant them as singles. Okay, gotcha. How many so, one of these jars have in them? Uh, with Syngonium, we're probably in the 14 range, okay. 14 plants. So, and then we come through, we use a technique called feather tucking. Um, right. And Steph, spin around behind you here. She's actually put them in the tray. And what, what's the media that, uh, that you're being planted? She's into? planting a performer right now, Jeffy's okay. performer, or okay. we use the, the LA pot, okay. depending on the moisture needs of the plant. Okay. So the LA pot would be drier, wetter? Wetter. 
wetter. Yeah, okay, gotcha. gotcha. At least with the mixes we're using. Right. So you're using a 72 tray all the time. Yeah, so there's that... a few exceptions. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when you're doing as many plants as we do, you know, the 72 is very universal, but every once in a while you get into a crop where it just doesn't quite work for the right. market. Okay. But we do so many different things. We got to try to have some things that are universal and we try right. to keep that 72 just that for us. Right, and so your customer might be using a potting machine or something yep. like that yep. too. So the knowing that that thing is coming in a 72, that's right. the same. Right, we're getting more time. and more customers that have sticking lines that are automated, right. um, which is cool to see. Yeah, right, um, yeah. 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 And so our stabilized media definitely helps right. uh, versus a loose fill, it would gotcha. be harder to do. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, we use a lot of stabilized media, um, especially because we irrigate, we flood irrigate, and we okay. capture and harvest all our water and nutrition. Okay. Nothing hits the ground. Okay, nice, let's look at that. Okay. So these are Ellie pots. This is a, basically, it forms a tube, and then you're, yeah. You're so, yeah. Essentially a soil sausage. Yeah, soil sausage. <laughs> That's what we call it. It, it, it amounts to, yeah. Um, yeah, and so what it does is it, it keeps the bulk of all the organic material in one place, Yes, holds it together, so when we do strike root, we can start working the plant earlier. Right. Um, and then we're not getting a lot of organic material back into our systems when we're using the ebb and flood. Right. Wow. Fill some trays in a hurry. That'll work. I love the colored tag. <laughs> Yeah, so that is, um, you know, some of our, your best ideas are right after you majorly screw something up. Yeah, right, <laughs> right, right. So we had, early on, we had uh, mixed it with some blueberries, and it's like all these, and it happened in the greenhouse. People uh -huh. not paying attention. Right, gotcha, and it's like, gotcha. So I found a company that would flood coat any Pantone color onto a tag. And so we've oh, got 15 colors now. Uh -huh, yeah, okay. I want more colors, but it's hard to get past 15 to where you can tell them apart in your catalog how many how many plants versus how many you're actually so we're probably yeah. right around 330 uh that would just our, be available in the catalog open availability yep. right i got you um, and then we're contracted to do all kinds of other things that puts us well over a thousand okay at, at any given time so how do these table how do these tables work so after after these have been planted they go in the trays um into the ellie pots how are these tables working how are you fertilizing Okay, so these tables move throughout the facility on this roller yes. bond. Yes. Um, so in this house, we are just putting a light layer of mist on with a boom. Yes. Um, as we move into the next houses, we have irrigation emitters that will flood the table. Gotcha. Takes about 15 minutes to flood and then another 15 to drain off. Gotcha. Uh, we capture all that water into a gutter system. Uh -huh. It's gravity fed to the front of the property of underground tanks, and then we start just filtering that water. Okay, and uh, it's a nutrient mix? In yes. The, in, yeah. in, okay, so all, that's how your fertilizing is in yeah, a Yeah, we a do all fertigation with every, every uh, irrigation. Right. And um, yeah, so then we capture all that. We are treating the water, filtering the water, and then we take EC and pH right. levels again, make adjustments before we you right. know, send out. And this is the part of the process where you've actually gotten to the same point that any person who was doing rooted cuttings or whatever has to manage. You yeah. know, you've gotten to this point where you have a small amount of root on them and you're trying or to no get them, root. Yep. or no root, and you're trying to get them rooted out without drowning mm -hmm. some and without, so, and you, the way you've solved that is you have the newer things here, getting them to a certain point and then you can Step them up. Yeah, ex yes. it, pretty much exactly. So uh -huh. um, our biggest challenge is with all the diversity of plant material. Right. You know, maybe this house is not optimized for um, milkweed, uh -huh. but, you know, it, it, it does a, a good enough job. So uh -huh. what we have is different zones. Gotcha. And we try to fit like plants into, you know, individual zones. Right. Yeah, this is very difficult when you're yep. doing any, any, any of this kind of thing, because some things can, get, can root very quickly. Right. And then be demanding of water in just a few days, you know, just literally a few days almost. Right. Or, so we do like, like rooting times down the uh -huh. same run that like relatively the same amount of moisture. And so we, we just manage that with the mixes mm -hmm. uh, and, um, you know, the, the, the zone it's in. Right. So, how long from the time you're you're putting them in these uh, Ellie pots, or how how what you know how when they're going in the trays, how long before they're heading out for the shipping? Our average grow time, if you 
take all our products is is probably 11 to 12 weeks. 11 to 12 weeks. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Another advantage to tissue culture in this system that you're using is that you can tell a customer, you know, March 15th, we mm -hmm. can have 2,000. Right. Potent hopefully. It, but uh, <laughs> right. what, what sometimes our customers don't understand that we constantly try to remind them uh -huh. is, uh, yeah, these are 12-week grow times, but we have to build the stock in the lab too. Right. Right. So yeah. that's if everything is built up and we just plant. But some, right. you know, um, sometimes we need six months, sometimes a year, depending on what it is. Right. Um, if it's one of our bread and butter items, we can respond super quickly because we have so much mass built in the lab. Right. But some of the specialty stuff, you know, we're just, you know, uh, maintaining small quantities in the lab. So to get to anything that's a surprise takes time. Right. So this is uh, this is one that the. Uh the oh, Southern yeah. Living Plant Collection pieces. Waikiki, yeah, Royal, um, Royal Hawaiian Colocasia yes. uh, from Dr. Cho's program. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. Right, it's there. in the Southern Living Plant Collection. It's I know the they're beauty. very excited about this. Uh, um, how many of these are you, are you doing at the time? We're doing quite a few. Uh -huh. um, and what's been neat about this one, there's been demand outside of the season, yes. which has been good. Right. Um, Colocasias historically, you know, are a heavy, heavy spring item. Right. Um, but this one has had a life, you know, uh, beyond that just because right. of its unique uh, foliage pattern. Yeah. And I've had, you know, there was one up at Mance in a 15 gallon container. Oh, I saw it was a picture of oh, You did? Cool. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah, a, yeah. it's a beautiful, beautiful plant. So we are just getting rolling into our uh, blackberry production for oh, the season. Right. Uh, we do a lot of the University of Arkansas's uh, blackberries. Um, you can see this whole run, yeah. part of this run, and this run is filling up with them. Um, it's, uh, it's a good crop for us. Uh, we're highly engaged with uh, the farms, um, and then it's also a great nursery item too. Right. Uh, so yeah, we are very excited about this season's crop. So, so this is going direct to farmers. Are they putting this size contain, um, those Ellie pots in the ground or are they yes, put in, okay. They, they, they will go right to ground. ground with this it. is a crop that we're doing larger than a 72. We're doing a 50 for the farms. Okay. I got you. I got you. They have some sort of mechanical way to do it or are they just all of the trowel? above. All yeah, of right. the above. All the above. Yeah. Okay. I got you. And so this is just going all over the country. Any place yep. that can, um, right. Yep. Southeast. Uh, uh, we do a little bit to the Northeast. Right, and you can keep them clean here. I mean, you're sending out. Yeah, blackberries are a virus magnet. Right. So gotcha. tissue culture is the only way you want to, you know, buy in blackberries. Right, and how many varieties did you say you? Oh, about 30. About 30, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. And I, I got, got them when I was doing, I had no idea, you know, as I was buying, you know, things from, you know, down here, you guys just had consistent, you know, I could get figs every year. I knew mm -hmm. I could get figs every year, but I had no idea, uh, you know, that it looked like this. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and that's the other beauty about tissue cultures. We do, and being in Florida, we can produce year round. Yeah. Um, so right. we can get people material when they typically haven't been able to get it. Right. Um, and so that's another huge benefit. So this is Colocasia mojito. Uh, we discovered this plant at AgriStarts, and I had the pleasure of naming it and protecting it. Uh, and it's become kind of our flagship Colocasia. Uh, it's a fun one because it's got all the different color markings uh, yeah. on the leaf and just great striation and stem color. People love it. So one thing I noticed here is, you know, you, we've talked through, you're collecting the rainwater off the building and then it's going through an evaporative cooler to keep the greenhouses cool. You're recycling, the, you're watering, your ebb water. and flow yeah. watering with the, and your nutrients so they're not ending up in the street streams and creeks and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You got solar on your new building, so there seems to be a theme to a little sustainability. Yeah, too. we're just, you know, we want to feel good about what we're doing, do things the right way. Right. Um, and yeah, we, all anywhere where we can implement things like that, we're really trying to get a good recycling program going. Right. We're recycling all the tra uh, used trays that come back to us. Right. So yeah, we want to be good stewards and uh, be responsible, sustainable growers. Nice. Well. Uh, thank you very much. I had no, well, honestly had, I mean, I, I knew we were going to see something interesting here today, but I had no idea. We've probably left out a lot of questions that you guys will have, probably. <laughs> so you can ask some of those down below, and maybe I can answer them. Uh, maybe I can answer them. Uh, you know, thank you very much. Yeah, for, absolutely. My for, pleasure. For entertaining. I know we we caught him right in the middle of show season too. So this is and shipping season coming yeah. up, right? It all collides. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. 
what else are you going to do? Exactly. <laughs> right. So thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, my Appreciate pleasure. It.